Shalom. Shalom and welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. This series is called Rise of the Judges. It is intended to take the sting out of those who feel pain that they prefer to dodge or hide from regarding judges and judgment. But I say to you, my brothers and sisters, when we welcome discipline, when we welcome judgment, it brings correction and refinement. It helps contribute towards making us anew. If you are one who seek to do the will of the Almighty Father, these words are for you. In this segment of Rise of the Judges, I want to address before the stopwatch. Before the stopwatch. You see, the race is established by the Almighty Yahuwah before the stopwatch begins. Before the stopwatch. Let's unpack this message and see if I can present something that may be of encouragement, maybe even new to you. My name is Simonai. Let's get into it. This slide here I'm showing have the addresses of verses dealing with judgment, when to judge, when not to judge. But I submit to you, although they are the addresses, it is important to pray to discern when they are applicable, at what times, and against whom. I'll read the addresses. If you've read them before or you're familiar with this slide, you can fast forward beyond this slide. Proverbs 31.9 from the east sword. Proverbs 31, 9, Ezekiel 20, verse 4, Matthew 7, 1 through 9, Luke 6, 37, John 7, 24, John 8, 15 through 16, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 12 through 16. These are verses that, because sometimes people are quick to say, you can't judge, you don't know nothing, and they're picking out one verse. Disregarding verses that say that he that is spiritual judges all things. He that is discerning of the voice of the Almighty Father is able to judge when walking in obedience. As he see fit, the Almighty Father brings different times, different conditions, different responses. With that said, let's unpack this before the stopwatch. You will hear me talk often, my brothers and sisters, about it is time to accept the realities before us. It's a lot of scripture reading and this and that regarding their scriptures. But how much is attached to the realities of what's unfolding? The Almighty Father has put before us many cues regarding this set-apart journey. For example, in various competitions where a stopwatch is used, we see the words, on your mark, get ready, set, and go. Come, let us unpack the realities we face and know this is a race and know this, in a race, there are measurements. Are we progressing? This race is not a race in place. Come with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11 through 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 11 through 13 reads, I again saw under the sun, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the mighty, nor even bread to the wise, nor even riches to men of understanding, nor even favor to men of knowledge. For time and chance meets with them all. For even man does not know his time. Like fish taken in an evil net, like birds caught in a snare, so the sons of men are snared in an evil time. When it comes down on them suddenly, also this I saw as wisdom under the sun. And it is great to me. Let me continue. You see, we don't know our time, my brothers and sisters. When we face physical death, that stopwatch ceased to clock the time and service to the Almighty Father. So what are we doing before the stopwatch ends? 
Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24 through 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. It reads, Do you not know that those who run in a race indeed all run, but one received the prize? Run in such a way as to obtain it, and everyone who competes controls himself in every way. Now they do it to receive a corruptible crown, but we for an incorruptible crown. Therefore I run according I run accordingly, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I treat my body severely and make it my slave, lest having proclaimed to others I myself might be rejected. What are we doing before the stopwatch? End times are here, my brothers and sisters. I say it all the time. And many speak of the final exodus. What we tend to ignore is praying for those that will be physically alive, but not in the ranks of the final exodus. Where's the discussion on praying for those? We might be, I might not be in the ranks of those gathered from the four corners before the physical return. Where's the prayer for those? Where's the prayer for the martyrs? Those that are on milk, those that were led astray momentarily. Those that was a part of the falling away momentarily. My brothers and sisters, before the stopwatch, things are going on. Things are happening. Realities are unfolding before our very eyes. What are we prepared to do? The clock ticks forward. It will not wait on any specific person. It will be wise to accept that this is Abba Yahuwah's plan. If we are in the final exodus, those outside will more than likely be far away. Not gathered with us, if I am one who, who is among the ranks of those gathered. Where's the prayer for those? Consider these words, my brothers and sisters. The time is now to consider our positions before the stopwatch ceases. We are in a race, but consider these words. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, and I'm reading from the Esau version, we too, then, having so great a cloud of witness all around us, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking to the prince and perfecter of our belief, Yahushua, who for the joy that was set before him endured the stake, having despised the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne, of the Almighty One. Some translations say run the race with patience. You see, my brothers and sisters, there are actions daily, whether we realize it or not. What say you, my brothers and sisters? Bear with me. We'll go here. End times are here and many speak of the final exodus. I think I spoke about this. But we ignore praying for those who will not be physically alive or not in the ranks of the final exodus. That doesn't mean between now and then, we ignore what me, must be done. There'll be those close by and those far away. I think I, I spoke on this. Let me get here. This is where I was at. Forgive me, my brothers and sisters. I got my slides out of order. 
The time is now to consider our positions before the stopwatch ceases. And I read here about running the race with endurance, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. How many of us think of them that it's a race? Let us run with endurance or patience. The balance we need to move, it's necessary. The balance we need for movement can be achieved by praying without ceasing, as it is written in 1 Thessalonians 15, 16 through 19. You see, we get instructions. Now, do we discern the life in them? Do we just glaze over the scriptures? Or do we see how they are filled when made alive with much instruction from Abba Yahuwah? Let me continue. It would be wise to accept that all actions we accomplish occur before the stopwatch ends. Each of us will face physical death at some point in life, with the exception of those alive upon Yahushua's physical return. There are no doubts in my mind that we will grow to realize what must be done before the stopwatch ends. If we are to walk in obedience in accordance to the desires of the Almighty Father. During the gathering of the set apart of set apart Yasharal, there'll be those who will be martyrs. Additionally, there will be those who will be left behind for other various reasons. Let us keep this in mind and in prayer. Are we confident in our position, Yasharal? Are we confident in how we are prepared to run this race? Consider these words, Matthew chapter 5. <coughs> Verse 43 through 45. Matthew 5, 43 through 45. And it reads, you heard that it was said, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those cursing you, do good to those hating you. Pray for those insulting you and persecuting you so that you become sons of your father in the heavens because he makes the sun rise on the wicked and on the good. And he sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. There are so many people, my brothers and sisters, don't understand that we should lean on the spirit of Yahuwah to respond and follow these instructions. You see, there were enemies. Shaul was an enemy at one time, persecuted us, cursed us at one time. But out of the love that the taught ones continued to demonstrate, it ultimately, ultimately Shaul found salvation, guidance. He found himself drawn to the Almighty Father. So we must understand that it is the spirit of Yahuwah that will guide us on who to love, what to hate. Because the scriptures talk about Esau Yahuwah hate, that spirit of wickedness. <laughs> Let us continue. So many people want to give a false sense of security and say, we all going to the promised land. We all going to make it. We all going to escape the destruction and the death that will come described in the tribulation. That's not so, my brothers and sisters. He's not going to wait for all of us to move out the way. Some of us will be caught in the midst of destruction and will face a physical death. But for those of us who belong to the Almighty Father, we go to the bosom of Abraham, wherever that may be. Be mindful of those not in the final exodus. This does not state that they will not inherit everlasting life. Just say they'll be left behind. What is written are the conditions some will face that are not in the ranks of individuals gathered. 
So many present a false sense of comfort by stating all of set apart Yashara will be gathered. We need to be mindful and prayerful of what lies ahead for all our brothers and sisters. There are tasks to accomplish before the stopwatch ends, before death. It's time that we recognize the reality is ahead. Yashara, oh Yashara, there's controversy regarding our final destination in reference to the promised land. Let me explain what I'm talking about. You see, before the stopwatch ends, it would be wise to learn how to choose the right group for the destination to the promised land. I'm among those who believe what is written regarding the location is true. I'm compelled to believe that the focal point would be around the set-apart mountain of Yahuwah. I believe that mountain is currently known as Jabal Allah's, the true Mount Sinai, where Musha Moses received the Ten Commandments. But did you know there are others who have a different place in mind? There are those who have taken a different position and believe that South Saharan Africa or Southeast Africa is the promised land. We cannot be in two places at the same time. Someone is wrong. Let us be assured before the stopwatch ends, there will be pain and regret to those who choose the wrong side. Let me caution each of us to consider what I'm about to present regarding some things that will happen before the stopwatch. It would be wise to begin learning how to discern and understand what must be done before the stopwatch ends. Now let me present some things not considered regarding those who choose wrongly as it pertains to the final exodus, as it pertains to the promised land. Come with me, O Yasharal. Let me take you to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 6, chapter, verses 1 through 3 reads, and the word of you came to me saying, Son of man, set your face towards the mountains of Yasharal and prophesy against them. And you shall say, O mountains of Yasharal, hear the word of Master Yahuwah. Thus said Master Yahuwah to the mountains, to the hills, to the ravines, and to the valleys. Look, I myself am bringing a sword against you, and I shall destroy your high places. Now this is not talking about Jabal Allahs. It's talking about other mountains where Yashara went when they shouldn't have. Let me continue. It goes on to say, And your slaughter places shall be ruined, your sun pillars shall be broken in pieces, and I shall make your slain fall in front of your idols, and lay the corpse of the children of Yashara in front of their idols, and scatter your bones all around your scattering places. In all your dwelling places the city shall be destroyed, and the high places deserted, so that your slaughter places are broken and bear their punishment. And your idols shall be smashed and made to cease, and your sun pillars cut down and your works blotted out. My brothers and sisters, if you back up and research what is happening here, these are things and conditions that occurred to Yasharal, who ignored going to the promised land. They went to where they wanted to go, to the mountains they chose. And the Almighty Father was wroth with them. And we'll also be the same in the days ahead. Let me continue. I'm in chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. And the slain shall fall in your midst, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. But I shall leave a remnant, and that some of you shall escape the sword among the nations when you are scattered throughout the lands, 
And those of you who escape shall remember me among the nations where they have been taken captive, because I have been broken by their adulterous heart, which has turned away from me, and by their eyes which hoard after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have done and all their abominations. You see, Yashara, if you research the story and find out what's going on, there were those who went where they wanted to go, do what they wanted to do, thinking that's the land they're supposed to be in. They're gravely mistaken. It goes on in verse 10. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah, and not for naught have I spoken to do this evil to them. And he's talking about those who went where they weren't supposed to go. This is my position. Let me also present a little more regarding why it is important to choose wisely, especially for such a time as this. Come with me to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verses 1 through 3. And I'm reading, as I stated, from the East Orb. He says, it states, it is written, and there was a scarcity of food in the land beside the first scarcity of food, which was in the days of Abraham. And Yitzhak went to Abimelech, sovereign of the Philistines, in Gerar. Notice how it's letting you know that scarcity of food tend to reoccur. Are you not aware that during these end times it talks about famine? Pestilence and disease, scarcities of food, reoccurring. It says, And Yehu appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Mitzrayim. Live in the land which I command you. You think if he's saying stay in the land that I command you and that Yehua doesn't change, that this is where he want us to be? He says, Sojourn in this land and I shall be with you and bless you. For I give all these lands to you in your seed, and I shall establish the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Emphasis, go to the land that I have promised you. It goes on to say, and I shall increase your seed like the stars of the heavens. I shall give all these lands to your seed, and in your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and guarded my charge, my commands, my laws, my Torah. Emphasizing how he gave to Abraham and his seed the promised land. Remember, O Yasharal, it is written in Malachi 3.6, For I am Yahuwah, I shall not change, and you, O sons of Yasharal, shall not come to an end. There's more to consider. So if he's telling us to stay out of Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim is anywhere there is bondage. And I submit to you, anywhere outside the borders of the true promised land will prove to be lands of bondage. Let's take a look at Jeremiah 44. Far from Genesis, we are now in Jeremiah 44. Let's see what happens here. 44, 12 through 14 says, and, it shall t and I shall take the remnant of Yehuda who have set their faces to go into the land of Mitzrayim to sojourn there. Again, I believe it's talking about anywhere outside of where Yehuda has promised us. And they shall all be consumed in the land of Mitzrayim. Fall by the sword, consumed by scarcities of food for the least from the least to the greatest, they shall die by the sword and by scarcity of food. And they shall be an oath and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. And I shall punish those dwelling in the land of Mitzrayim as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by scarcity of food and by pestilence. And none of the remnant of Yehuda who have gone into the land of Mitzrayim to sojourn there shall escape or survive. Least they return to the land of Yehuda, to which they are longing to return to dwell there, for they shall not return except those who escape. 
Don't go into the wrong lands, my brothers and sisters. Mitzrayim, anywhere outside of what is promised, will prove to be where the anti-Mashiach and the false prophet and the one world government, government will be conducting their business. Let me continue. 15th through the 17th verse. I'm in Jeremiah 44. It goes on to say, Then all men who knew that their wives had burned incense to other mighty ones, and all the women who stood by a great assembly, and all the people who dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim and Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, We are not going to listen to you in the matter about which you spoke to us in the name of Yahuwah. You see, there are those who are warning Yasharal, don't go into a land of bondage. Don't go anywhere outside of the promised land in the days ahead. We will discover where those borders are and where we should be, those who will fulfill a promise made by Abba Yahuwah. It says, but we shall do whatever has gone out of our own mouth to burn incense to the sovereignness of the heavens and pour out drink offerings to her. As we have done, we, our father, our sovereigns, and our heads, in the cities of Yehuda, and the streets of Jerusalem, and we had plenty of food and were well off and saw no evil. My brothers and sisters, the scriptures talk about the promised land we will bear an increase. Notice how they say we're going to do whatever we want. We don't, we're not lacking food or any of that kind of stuff. Know this. Conditions can change in an instant. Places that are thriving with food can become dry and parched. Famine and pestilence can hit anywhere. Just as deserts can flourish with water and bring about food as it is written, as it is promised. It states that we can, it's impossible to please Yahuwah without belief. There are those who are saying South Saharan Africa or Southeast Africa is flourishing now. This is a land of milk and honey. They're going by what they see now. And I've heard them criticize the promised land, the true promised land, saying it's mostly a desert. Not looking at the times that has been recently brought to light that water has been springing up. Greenery is gradually starting to spring up. The Almighty Father is preparing to Present to us the true promised land and how he will bring blessings, favor, food, and plenty. Read the entire 44th chapter of Jeremiah and discover that Mitzrayim, Egypt, is a place of bondage. And I submit to you, anywhere outside the promised land will prove to be a place of bondage where the one world government will be functioning and thriving and facing destruction. Pray earnestly, my brothers and sisters. I'm compelled to believe that anywhere outside the promised land is a place of bondage and will end with much pain and regret. There are some people who have went to South Sah parts of South Saharan Africa and Southeast Africa who regret it already. Proven that they have made a mistake. Yashara will be gathered in mask. Before the stopwatch, we will witness running a race with patience and endurance as guided by the spirit of Yahuwah to do what he has established, my brothers and sisters. As I gradually come to an end, I want to say this, my brothers and sisters. Many may not think there's a stopwatch, but there's a beginning and an end of a matter. Each of us will face death in many different ways at many different times. And when we do, that stopwatch ends. So before even looking at a stopwatch, should we not earnestly seek to do the will of the Almighty Father? He, he who is able to identify going anywhere outside what is ordered by Abba Yahuwah.
anyone who is able to discern, to identify going anywhere outside what is ordered by Abba Yahuwah steps into a place of bondage. I cannot emphasize that. There is much to consider regarding days ahead. Have discussions regarding before the stopwatch. What to do before the stopwatch ends. My brothers and sisters, remember, there are no rewinds and we cannot regain the time already redeemed. Let us press forward, seeking the wisdom and discipline, praying always before the Almighty Father. Remember Colossians 4, 5 says, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. Let us look at how we're redeeming the time each day. Let us have discussions on what are we learning? What has happened? What have we experienced in being renewed as our outward man perish? What's your position on this subject before the stopwatch? What do you plan to do? What changes are you prepared to make? My brother, my sister, judgment will bring order and structure before the stopwatch ends, before judgment day. Are you ready? If you listen to this from beginning to end, I salute you. I salute your patience and pursuit of set apartness, and I thank you. Stay tuned. There is much more to come. If I said anything to trigger something positive that nudges you closer to the Almighty Father, that makes you hungry, even more so hungry and thirsty for his word, for the bread of life, for his guidance, consider subscribing. Share, like, let's take advantage of YouTube's algorithm. Let's spread the word, my brothers and sisters, that others may gain something that helps them, that aids them. And in their strength, it may come a time when they are helping us. You see, we never understand and know how things come back around to us. But enough said, my brothers and sisters, before the stopwatch, we're living it. What are you going to do? What's your position? I pray that you are doing well, that you are encouraged, and that your spirit is stirred. On that note, I say to you, my brother, my sister, my family, be encouraged.